Hey everyone, I'm Samuel. Uh, I work for Revos, and I'm going to talk about uh, season two of my previous talk last year. Uh, was it so I was talking about uh, uh, shrinking the elephant, and uh, the elephant in the room was actual attestation. Uh, there was a lot of talk last year about the client side of the uh, computational computing, how you generate, uh, how you encrypt things, and, and everything in the, on the kernel side, but uh, not much talk about the, uh, the attestation side of things. Can I? Um, so yeah, we were talking a lot about the, the client side, how do we support attestation, uh, uh, computational computing in the, in the kernel, in the guest, uh, guest side of things, but uh, there, we're kind of looking at the remote attestation as a black magic thing that happens in the background and everything is fine. Um, so why did I talk about this? Because uh, basically uh, what we're saying is that uh, computational computing without attestation is, is, not, is not confidential. Um, and that's one thing which makes attestation a, a remote or local attestation. I disagree with that assumption. You can disagree, yes. Okay. There are use cases for confidential computing in the cloud where all you really care about is protection against others trying to attack yeah. and you're willing to accept the assurance of the cloud service provider. Then in that scenario, confidential computing attestation provided the CSP assures you you're set up confidential still provides a huge amount of value to the tenants. And how do I how do the guests can verify this? They don't need to, they trust the cloud service provider. So yeah, if okay. you're on a, a track yeah. so it's confidential computing where what it's confidential computing where you trust the CSPs. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's that's a different threat model. Uh, okay, fine. Um <laughs> I wasn't sure there was a question, but <laughs> your previous question was more relevant. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're uh, saying that the uh, attestation is important, uh, and the the problem with we're seeing with this is that. Uh, the remote part of attestation, well, the, the, the attestation part of things is, is very, very fragmented or used to be very fragmented. The interfaces, the protocols, uh, the formats that people use uh, and the manufacturer interaction, everything was very fragmented, uh, very difficult to, to plug in. So basically, as a client, you get an attestation report from your platform, uh, for your, from your VTPM, for, uh, sorry, SVSM, and plumbing that into a random attestation service is very challenging, or was very challenging. That was the the, the, the pitch of last year's talk. And very briefly, uh, to understand what we mean by attestation, um, I'm just going to go through quickly on the different step of attestation and why we think it's very fragmented and, and what we try to or are trying to to, to fix with the uh, attestation service uh, project. And really, uh, um, uh, attestation. The, the goal of remote attestation is is that simple thing here, where you, as a guest, you're trying to get a secret. From the broker and the only way to get that secret is to be attested and have the, the broker deliver the secret to you provided that it can verify that you're attested how do we do this uh, from the uh, confidential guest uh, we get an attestation sorry an attestation report or evidence from the platform itself and we provide that to a, a trusted issuer something that's going to issue a key or a, a token that allows you to eventually get a key uh, this issuer then forwards this attestation evidence to a verifier, um, and this gets complicated here because the, the verifier needs to be able to verify all sort of attestation report formats, a SNP attestation format, a TDX attestation format, an SVSM attestation format, all kind of things. Every manufacturer, every project has its own attestation format. So that's already difficult. Uh, and those two blocks here combined together is what people call an attestation service something that you provide an attestation evidence to, and it verifies uh, your, your evidence. Once the verifier um, has, has been able to verify or look at the evidence, uh, it will provide an attestation result. Attestation result as in, does it fail? Does it, does it, it, it may be okay, it may not be okay, but it's a, it's a result coming from the verifier. 
to the issuer, and then the issuer basically forward that to the guest as an attestation token, something that allows you to eventually get the secret from a remote party. Uh, sorry. Um, one question that comes here is for the verifier. How, do we, how does the verifier actually check the attestation evidence that it gets? Uh, and that's another layer of complexity that comes in where you need to provide the verifier with a set of reference values, also known as golden values, that you're going to compare your attestation results, uh, attestation evidence against. And also typically a set of policies where you say, yeah, I can compare this, this value against a set of reference but I want this firmer version to be either 1.3, 1.2, or 1.4. What is it exactly? So basically, those two needs to be provisioned in the verifier in some magic format, uh, in some magic ways, uh, for the verifier to be able to say, that's my attestation result. Give that to the issuer, and then the issuer transform that into a signed token that it gets back to the, to the TVM. Then the TVM can use that uh, token to actually get the secret. So sends that token back to a secret broker, and the secret broker can, can even be the, the, the same entity as the, the issuer here. So you can have a, the, the, the key broker or the secret broker be the same, the same entity. But it can, be, it can be something different. So there's that two different models. But basically, you get an attestation token, you send that back to the broker, and you get a secret back if your attestation token is validated and, and shows that the attestation results are correct. So this is basically like a high level view of uh, remote attestation. And this brings a lot of complexity and a lot of proprietary uh, custom things that, all, that are all over the place and makes it very difficult to go from a client generated attestation report to actually being able to get a secret. All the way here, you have, you have different formats, different protocols. Uh, a different uh, origin, where, where reference value is coming from. So one, one very important one is the uh, attestation evidence format. As I said, each and every manufacturer will give you its own attestation format. Some of them are somehow standardized or following a, some sort of spec that uh, are defined by something else that the manufacturer itself. Some other manufacturers like uh, Intel or, or AMD, they have their own custom uh, a, a binary format of, of the, for the attestation report. So it's it's very difficult to build generic parser from a verifier point of view uh, for this format. How do you get the uh, the token back to the to the to the to the guest? It's also completely open, and depending on the on the attestation service that you're talking to, you get you're going to get different formats. So you need to be able from the guest to manage and handle all those different formats. Um, how do you talk? How do you send the evidence? Just sending the attestation report, the the attestation evidence to your attestation service. This is already completely custom and open, each and every uh, uh, service out there has its own, its own thing. Oops. So that was the situation last year. Um, we worked for the past year to, uh, on a, a project called the Attestation Service. Uh, sorry for not finding a, a more uh, um, original name, but uh, as part of the Confidential and Continuous Project, we built this Attestation Service uh, thing which is precisely uh, this. So basically, uh, those two blocks, the blue blocks there on, on the right. Um, so the attestation service project uh, uh, contains those two, those two, those two things. Uh, it's a completely open source. Uh, it's architecture agnostic. Um, we haven't fixed the attestation evidence format problem because we're not silicon manufacturers. We cannot fix that. Uh, but we, are, we have implemented a verifier. So this part right on the right hand side of things that, that gets the attestation evidence and is supposed to be able to understand everything, every manufacturer format. So we've built the verifier to that and we build it so that it supports all major attestation evidence formats. So you can send it a, a TDX, an SCV, uh, a CCA, an ARM CCA, an SGX, uh, an Azure uh, VTPM format, CSV, which is a Chinese uh, x86 manufacturer that, that do confidential computing, for those who don't know about this, and that there are some, some of those manufacturers. All those formats are supported by this single verifier. So you can generate and, and get an attestation report from any of those platforms, send it to this single verifier, and actually get uh, attestation result back. Uh, we also support external verifiers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Intel Amber, which is a uh, Intel, black box, let me put it this way, 
uh, where you send a, a not actually not a attestation evidence, a TDX attestation evidence, and it gives you a attestation result back, and you have to trust it. Anyway, uh, but we we do um, so the the verified block the, uh, that the, that's part of the uh, attestation container containers attestation service is pluggable, so you can. You can remove that box on the right hand side of thing and have the the issuer, which is called the, the KBS, talk to an external one. Uh, in in that case, uh, Intel's uh, proposal, the the Amber thing. Uh, all the formats and protocol that we're using uh, are open, as in specified uh, most of the time by the uh, IETF. Uh, so, for example, uh, actually, I have a more descriptive view of things. Um, so, for example, uh, all the formats for the attestation results and the attestation, attestation token are using a, a GWT, a JSON web token. So this is something that's uh, standardized by the uh, IETF. So if you can read an RFC and, and implement this, or you, you may want to use existing libraries, you're going to be able to, uh, to parse the attestation results that we get from this confidential containers uh, attestation service. Uh, the protocol that we define between the guests and the, the attestation service is HTTP based, no fancy thing. It's very simple. Uh, it's it's a, uh, you, you give it an evidence, uh, do some exchanges, and it gives you an attestation result back uh, all through HTTP and very completely uh, uh, architecture agnostic. Um, same for providing the, uh, the, the token to the, uh, the KBS. So in, in our case, the, 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 the secret broker and the uh, issuer, the one that actually get, uh, uh, issues the attestation token, is the same entity. It's called the KBS in, in this project. Uh, we're also using uh, HTTPS for provisioning our attestation service uh, with uh, reference values and policies. Uh, it's actually the same protocol, defined in the same protocol uh, uh, as the rest of the attestation service. But as you can see, there are um, a few things that uh, we haven't fixed, obviously. Um, one of the major one is the attestation evidence format. As I said, uh, this is well, this it's defined by silicon manufacturers mostly, and we cannot can not really influence this. Uh, we can influence the, the the one that are being defined, like the the RIS five one, for example. But the existing one is something that we can't influence, so we have to support multiple of them. Uh, the other uh, things that we haven't um, uh, uh, fixed or or kind of centralized is the uh, all the, the part the, uh, at the bottom for the, the policies and the reference values, uh, which format do you use uh, for those? Um, uh, and most, uh, most importantly, where do they come from? Uh, so basically your reference values are uh, typically a hash of your firmware, a hash of your kernel, a hash of your user space libraries. And this, is, this should be coming from some sort of uh, a trusted supply chain for your software. So some trusted CI that gets into your, your reference value provider here and, and gives that th those values uh, and, and provision that there. Uh, and there's, it's, it's a pretty big gap. And it's a, it, I mean, we're building all this security stuff, but eventually we're comparing our attestation evidence against reference values that we don't really know where they're coming from. And are they trusted? Are they not trusted? It's, it's difficult to actually verify. Um, and the yeah the origin is one thing and the format as well so how do you which format do you use for describing a hash of a firmware and make it distinct from a hash of a kernel and also make it distinct from a platform status uh, so do you want to know if your platform is running in debug mode in prediction mode and all this how do you describe this um, so looking at those gaps um, how do we fix this um, oh try to improve this. Uh, first of all, for the attestation evidence format, uh, it's not really fixing it, but at least uh, it, it's kind of making nicer. The, uh, uh, the ConfigFS TSM uh, ABI that Dan Williams has been pushing, it's basically a, a kernel user space API, a ABI that allows for requesting an attestation evidence from your platform in a completely architecture agnostic way. So you have one entry point, uh, it's a config FS base. Uh, you read it back and you get you get an attestation report. So instead of having a slash dev slash TDX and slash dev slash ICV and slash dev slash RIS5 slash dev whatever, we now have one entry point for this. It it doesn't really fix the fact that all those attestation formats are just widely defined, but at least we have entry, one entry point to, to get them. We just uh, get a binary blob that we need to 
kind of know where, if, which platform is coming from. Uh, so as I said, the, the evidence format is still architecture specific. Um, there are two uh, architecture that actually took a nicer way, uh, ARM CCA and RIS-5 uh, as well, that are using something that is not completely custom as far as attestation evidence format are concerned. And they're using uh, entity attestation tokens, EAT, which is also uh, defined by the uh, EAT, uh, IETF, sorry. And it allows you for uh, parsing a, a set of claims. Basically, your attestation report is a set of claims for your platform, which firmware you're using, which status your, your, your platform is in, and you can parse that in a standard way instead of having to go through the uh, hundreds of pages of the TDX spec to understand what, how your format is, is built. So yeah, if you are working on a new architecture, a new confidential computing architecture, please, please use that um, and don't come with your custom thing. Uh, the reference values, um, we're going to, uh, I'm gonna to try to push for using uh, Corim uh, which is a, a again, IETF defined format for uh, describing uh, to a verifier uh, what is what what your uh, what your platform should be looking like. So basically, describe uh, you give it a set of reference values, a set of uh, uh, states, and, and in a, in a nicely formatted way and an easily parsable way. Uh, as I said, the the big gap here is the link between the supply chain and and the reference value provider. Uh, you're going to give it some values, but uh, how, how do you verify that this is this is coming from a trusted uh, uh, build chain? Uh, the last thing that we're going to look at, uh, yeah, uh, uh, is device attestation. Um, it's another uh, thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, when you add a direct, uh, when you directly assign a device into into a TVM, then you you must attest uh, uh, this device uh, before accepting it. And by you, I mean the the actual guest. The guest must, must verify and attest this device before saying, yes, I want it to be part of my TCB. Um, what we're proposing is for the kernel to offload the, the device attestation part. So basically all the remote attestation thing that the plumbing that I just talked about uh, to an entity called the, the trusted device manager. The other part of the device attestation is that once you accept a device into your TCB, uh, this device attestation result must be part of your overall platform uh, attestation evidence. So now that your device is part of a TCB, when you send an attestation evidence to a, a, a relying party to a test of your platform, it must include your, your newly attested device, your newly added device. So this is what we call combined attestation. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead. I misunderstood what you're saying, but are you suggesting that you Cannot have the TCB changed, or you cannot. You 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 just the delta. No, you. Uh, the, the thing is, you, you um, the the platform attestation uh, not always happen at boot. It can happen at any point in time. Okay, so it can also happen after you actually accepted a device into your TCB. If that happens, then you the, the next time you do an attestation, and you can do multiple attestation as well after or before a device comes into your TCB. The next time you do a, a, a platform attestation, you you have to include because you're basically attesting to your TCB, and your TCB now includes this device. You need to you need to include the the, the device attestation results because you already attested uh, the, uh, this device into your overall attestation report. This is what we 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 call combined attestation, where basically the attestation report not only includes the the CPU generated attestation report, but also additional data including all the devices that you added into your TCB. Then you send that to your relying party and let it verify that it's, it's okay or, or not. So this is, this is basically what we're saying. And uh, yeah, we, we, want to, we want to propose, uh, I, yeah, running out of time, I guess. Let me just quickly go through that. Uh, this kind of high level view where basically the, uh, the guest kernel will detect a device uh, and own the device, the, the, the device that's been assigned to, uh, to, a, to a, a TVM. Um, and the guest would rely on a user space component to actually run the whole attestation flow. The guest will be able to authenticate the device, detect the device, but basically the guest probably does, the guest kernel does, probably doesn't want to go through an HTTPS endpoint and send 
attestation format, get attestation result, do all the verification by itself. So it would rely on a user space uh, component that does the attestation. The same way uh, you have a user space component that do platform attestation. Uh, and that component would basically run the whole attestation, send attestation result back for that device to the kernel and let the kernel decide if it wants to accept it or not. And if the kernel want de decide to accept it, it tells, that it, it tells the, this, that decision, it gives that decision to, to the TSM, then opens the whole flow for DMA and, and MMIO. A very quick description, because I I think I'm running out of time, but I don't know if I have time for, for questions. Or, for... Um... One question, yeah. More of a comment. Like, I don't have a problem with user space having a way to override or get in or get in the flow, but I also think kernel this big kernel components also want to get in, get in the flow of attestation. So yeah, it, 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 it may it may be it may be the case that the kernel knows how to do some of it. <laughs> yeah. Also has a user space helper that you use based the other opinion too. Like I think I'm going to get opinions from. I think the, the kernel can can definitely <laughs> authenticate the device so it gets a it gets a whole certificate chain from the device and can can verify and authenticate the device but the whole remote attestation process that includes talking to a remote HTTP endpoint that's probably not something you want to do and, and the, basically we can we can say the kernel is free to ask for an attestation result from this uh, user space component and let it run through get attestation results and it's basically the, the, the only thing that this trust device manager would do is pushing attestation results to the kernel and, and let it decide what it wants to do with it. Yeah. You could do exactly the same with the with the, the I think you can. I think you can, and basically the, the, the link between the kernel and the and the TSM would be a direct link between the kernel and the TDI itself through through SPDM. Because in the case of the host uh, use case, the SPDM is established between the device and the kernel directly. In which case, the, the trusted device manager gives attestation results, and the the the, the host kernel would basically uh, accept, which means in TD's parlance that it would actually move the TDI into a run state, which basically opened the, the whole IO flow. Yeah, we have a, a another. Uh, it's not a buff, but it's a ses secure I/O session. Yeah, it's, it's a buff model as well. yeah. Uh, I think we have out of time, but, but last question. Yeah. Yeah. So the secret broker gets the, the the GWT, which could be a key or something else, but it's token containing the entire attestation result and signed by every line party. So the the secure broker can actually take should actually take that that parse it and understand if the attestation results are okay and, and being able to verify the, the the authenticity of the of this token. Then it can decide if this if this is. Uh, if this is some, if, if, if this links to a secret that can be uh, a provision into into the guest, but it, there needs to be a link between that at this attestation token and and the guest, yes. Yeah, which is which is typically why the the, the secret broker actually runs in the attestation. Wow. So it, I, yeah, so okay. separate, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> the. Thank you. But we should